Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, Our National Parks, where each class we're going to visit a different national park that's actually driving distance from Los Angeles, where we are now. So today we are going to go to the a national seashore of, of Point Reyes in California. And there's a lighthouse there too. So this is a painting of the national seashore of Point Reyes in Northern California. It's above San Francisco. I'm gonna show you how to make all these cool colors. Let's take a look at the map and find out where it is. So this is where Point Reyes is. Do you see everything in pink? That's all the national seashore. There's a lot of beach in that national seashore. And there's a line that goes up right here. That is the San Andreas Fault. You can actually see it from space. And it kind of divides off that whole pink section of Point Reyes. So it has a very unique ecosystem. Our art is going to be based on this beautiful lighthouse. Now the lighthouse has served a very important purpose for the sailors of long ago and up until almost recently. And you could tell which lighthouse you were near by how quickly the light spun around. So that way if you were a captain on a ship and you saw the light and you counted how fast it was going, you could determine where on the coast you were. So it was very valuable for them in navigation as well as avoiding hazards. There's a really cool waterfall that comes down onto the beach line. It must come from a local river, but it's one of the must-see sites on the National Seashore is where this beautiful waterfall dumps into the ocean. Now, the cows in this area have beautiful views. There are many, many, many dairy farms, and these dairy farms have names that you would recognize when you go to the grocery store and go to buy ice cream or yogurt. Many of those farms are located in this area. Here is a view of the whole coastline. Now, this is a very protected area. There are many bird species that come here. There are elephant seals that come here. Gray whales actually migrate right by here on their way back from Mexico. And also, many, many elk live here as well. And one of the other sites you can see is this beautiful road, just a perfectly beautiful little piece of nature and road as you're driving through the various parts of this park. So I hope you get to go there because it's truly beautiful. Let's take another look at my painting. And yes, it's a painting. So I want to point out a couple of things. Remember how we're always talking about my horizon line? We're going to put that in first. Now my paints don't have a brown, but there's a bunch of ways we can make brown. And I'll show you that when we paint this part. Now, I left the white paper. My lighthouse is white, but it's in shadow a little bit. So I let the white paper be the white of the lighthouse and just put a little bit of blue shadow in there. Now remember, you've got a couple of choices. You've got this aqua blue and you have more of an indigo blue. I chose to use both. But if you're going to do a blue sky, you can't make them the same. So if you're going to have aqua water, you need to have an indigo sky. You can't have the same or it doesn't read like one is water and one is sky. Me, I'm kind of partial to yellow skies. And I got my birds going on here. I have the light in the lighthouse of the yellow sky being reflected. And these are the homes that the light keeper would stay in as he was manning the lighthouse. Let's start our drawing. All right, remember I talked about that horizon line. It's the most important. Now remember, basic shapes. Okay, I'm gonna do a really quick sketch here. Now if you guys can see, I'm not drawing really firm, I'm kind of sketching. I'm sketching, I'm sketching, I'm sketching. So here's my tower, here's my first building. I'm gonna put my second building over here. It's a square. I want you to notice that I've made these lines curve to show that the lighthouse is actually kind of round. And I built it. Pencil sketch. Now it's time for the black marker outline. I 
only thing left I want to put in are some rock, little bits of showing that this is rock. Just wiggly lines, jaggedy wiggly lines. Okay. Now we're ready for paint. When you're going to be painting, it's best to have your paint, if I'm left-handed, so my paints are on my left side. If the paints were over here, I would be risking dropping droplets of color where I don't want them. So when you set up your paint station, have it be so you're not going across your painting. I'm going to start with my sky because my sky is yellow and the yellow gets kind of messed up pretty early on. So let's start with this. I'm going to drop a little bit of orange into my yellow. It can warm a yellow up a little bit. Otherwise, the yellow kind of feels a little cold. I know it's weird because it's a warm color. But when you add just a drop of orange to your yellow, it really gives it some body. Look at how rich that yellow is. Just going in really fast. Okay, now it's time for my aqua water. We have aqua and we have indigo. Aqua is more on the green side. Indigo is going to be more on the purple side. If you are doing a blue sky, and skies come in all colors besides blue, but if you are doing a blue sky, make sure you use two different blues. If you're doing an ocean scene, the water has to be one color blue and the sky has to be a different color blue, or it will be very hard to tell the difference of what is sky and what is ocean but I chose a yellow sky, so I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm gonna to go to the indigo side. I'm gonna put in some indigo waves, just little waves. The roofs on my structures are red, but if you wanna make red a little more red, add a little bit of orange to it. I'm just grabbing a little bit of orange over here to add to my red. It makes scarlet. Scarlet is a brighter red than red. My, my lighthouse is white. I don't want to paint that because I'm going to use the white paper. But my sun is over here, so this side of my buildings are in shadow. I'm just going to take a little bit of very watered down blue, and I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on my lighthouse. Hardly any paint, mostly water. Same with this. Hardly any paint, mostly water. And for the white on my sail, because my sail is white and it's also in the shadow. Now I need gray. I don't see gray here, but I know that if I use a very watered down black, that creates gray. So here's the road that you drive and walk down to go see it. Our gray whale is also a very diluted black. Okay, now we got all this brown, right? I told you there's three ways of finding brown. Way number one is purple and yellow. Way number two is blue and orange. And the third way you make brown is by green and red. These are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. We call them complements. Of those three options, I have a tendency to go with the blue and orange. You get a slightly different brown from each of those combinations. And also, less blue, more orange. But if you want your brown to be darker, go with more blue. So here we go. That's kind of a, there we go. See how we just added a little bit more blue to that? Look, my brush is just going crazy. Right? I'm not trying to do anything specific. I'm not drawing one rock or another. I'm just making my brush find its own way. I'm using some of these lines as my guidelines, but I just kind of want it. Rocks are very irregular, right? So put a little bit of black in there. Let's put this one a little bit brighter. I'm going to get some of my blue. Look what happens when I add that blue. See how dark brown that gets the second I add some blue to it? And 
And if I wanted to get it even more dark, I would grab some black. And I can even put some black in here where the lines overlap to make it a little bit more dynamic. And I just have to hit my boat. Door, which is green, I believe. And as long as you got the green going on, there's probably some plants in here. I'm just, my brush is just going, look at my brush. It's just going crazy. It's like a rabbit on my brush. And it's just jumping over, right? I'm not sitting there drawing every leaf on the plant. I grab some green paint and I'm squishing it around. Just squish it around. Mix it up. Everything here is wet so it blends really easily. All right, I think the only thing left to do here are a couple dark windows. Dark window number one, dark window number two. And then the last thing, and my water's kind of dirty now, so if I had time, I would rinse it out before I do this. But we just have to put a little bit of light, the sunlight reflection in the top of our lighthouse. This is all glass and that's where the light comes out. Presto! This is our finished painting of the lighthouse at Point Reyes National Seashore. Well that was Point Reyes National Seashore with a beautiful lighthouse. I hope you enjoyed making that painting. Let's take a look. See I just want to show you that we got the black marker. The black marker helps bring out the details and then the watercolor Sometimes the watercolor picks up some of the black. Like in here, you could take up some of the black and you can mix the black in with your picture. Yellow sky, love the yellow skies. I hope you enjoyed our national park selection for the day. Please join us again at the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center series on the national parks. We'll go to a new destination. Thanks for joining us.